Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Um, we're just going to be talking about one story in this video, but it's an embarrassing story uh, in regards to a major release on Nintendo Switch. And I'm just, I'm kind of at a loss for words. Uh, the reason we're really doing one story today is I actually have a lot going on. Uh, my kids are out of school this week, so I got to go take them to go do something here in a little bit. So uh, we're just going to get this out the door because uh, I think this is a really uh, important story to talk about. Uh, before we do, I want to remind you that we do have a giveaway event happening this Sunday called Prime Giving. Um, there'll be a Switch OLED Satisfied Grip, uh, Special Edition Switch Lite, some Zelda Game & Watches, and a whole lot more being given away uh, starting Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time live during our Prime Giving event. Uh, by the way, if you want to enter for the grand prize, which includes a Switch OLED, we actually have a separate entry form for that. Uh, you can enter in the entry form down in the description or the pinned comment. Also, I implore people to please check out our podcast channel. I haven't been getting my old podcast up there as quickly as I want, but eventually our entire Nintendo Prime podcast will be migrating over to that channel. That being said, let's get into this really strange story. All right, so you guys know about the Grand Theft Auto trilogy on Switch, right? I mean, it, it it's come out on all platforms and basically been a mess on every platform it's been on. In fact, it was removed from sale on PC for a while, uh, and PlayStation Store was offering refunds. So it's been a mess on everything, but bar none, the worst version has been on Switch. And Digital Foundry did a really big deep dive um, showing all of the additional issues that are happening on the Nintendo Switch version. Well, today... Um, I guess really late last night, probably, they released a patch, or at least patch notes. I don't know if the patch is live yet, because I'm not spending my money on this garbage tier port job. But uh, they did release uh, what's going to be patch notes, and I'm reading this off of Nintendo Life, and it says, following on from an update on the weekend for other platforms, because they did get a weekend uh, update, switched in. Rockstar now appears to have pushed the latest updates for the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy, the Definitive Edition, on Nintendo Switch Live. So they should be up, supposedly. There are a handful of Switch-specific fixes and various general fixes across all platforms. These are the current versions of each game on Switch as of the 23rd of November update. So the, the current version should be GTA 3 version 1.0.3, Vice City version 1.0.4, and San Andreas ver version 1.0.3. And then let's get into the patch notes. So, Grand Theft Auto Trilogy, the Definitive Edition, update notes, 1.02 for PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series, XS, Xbox One, and Switch. It, so here's a general all-platform update. Fixed multiple localization issues. Fixed, fixed multiple instances of missing or misaligned collisions. Fixed multiple instances of holes in the map. Yes, holes in the map. Fixed multiple instances of incorrect or misplaced textures. Fixed multiple instances of the camera clipping through objects. Fixed multiple instances of incorrect subtitles being displayed. Fixed multiple instances of incorrect help text being displayed. Fixed multiple instances of misplaced objects. Fixed multiple instances of issues with character models in cutscenes. And fixed multiple instances of audio lines being skipped, delayed, or repeated. Those are just general fixes. All those were bugs in every version of the games. Um, here's Grand Theft Auto 3 the Definitive Edition fixes. Uh, fixed issues with blurry camera cuts and transitions during Grand Theft Arrow cutscene. Fixed an issue where play and spray doors were closed, preventing the player from being able to enter. Fixed an issue where game stalls and prop pops into the gone fishing cutscene. Fixed an issue where the player would fail the mission on the thieves with a message, a thief's dead, after the cutscene plays. Fixed an issue with failing the mission, the last request, due to Asuka falling out of the boat. Fixed an issue with a missing GPS route when driving Curly Bob in the taxi during the mission cutting the grass. Fix an issue where the damage meter is not displaying correctly in the mission escort service. Fix an issue with a hole in the map that allow players to access Stanton Island very early. Fix an issue with the Claude floating in the cutscene for the mission Big and Vainy. Fix an issue where character models were not animating during the cutscene for the mission Luigi's Girls. Fix an issue where character models were not animating during the cutscene for the mission Give Me Liberty. Fix an issue where the player can boost their running speed by quickly swapping through weapons. Fix an issue in uh, where in the mid-mission cutscene would start then fade to black before restarting again during the mission 
uh, Sayarna Salvatore. Fix an issue where the game would crash when entering a vehicle after completing the Triad War. Um, that's on the Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One version specifically. Fix an issue where the achievement disposing of the evidence does not unlock after completing the dead skunk in the trunk mission for the Xbox Series X, slash S, and Xbox One version. Fix an issue with the changes to language settings not being retained after reboot, a Nintendo Switch specific fix. That's just one game. Here's a look at notes for Vice City. Now here's a look, look at notes for San Andreas. Do you not see a problem? These are insane patches. Patches you should not need to this extent. Fixing fundamental gameplay issues. Things not animating. Issue with rain visual effects having to get fixed. Issues with invincibility. Issues with holes in the map. I don't know how these games released. I literally, I mean, look at a couple of these Nintendo Switch ones on, uh, what is this, on the uh, San Andreas. You know, fix an issue with changes to language not being retained to reboot. Fix an issue with pedestrian weapon, weapon accuracy. How is there an issue with their weapon accuracy? I don't understand it. Fix an issue where the game would restart from the beginning when selecting to retry from the last checkpoint on the mission high. How does that happen? How do you have a game restart from the very beginning when you're trying to restart a mission? That, that blows my mind. That's fundamentally broken. You have taken these three well-regarded games and broke them. People would have rather just had them straight up ported, I think, at this point. Versus the new visuals and enhanced gameplay. No. These are garbage tier. Now look, maybe after this patch, everything's much better. But Rockstar should have never let this happen. And I know Rockstar did not internally develop these games. I hired another studio. But they allowed these games to come out in this state. So whether it's the fault of deadlines, the fault of Rockstar not doing quality checks, or maybe the studio just isn't very good. I don't know where all the fault lies. I only know that Rockstar and 2K bear a lot of responsibility since they control whether or not this game these this collection even came out this was a cash grab they attempted to do it cheap and my lord this these patch notes show how fundamentally broken these games were i mean some people have complained they were so broken on switch it was basically unplayable to them and when you have animations not working you have a literal retry in a mission booting you back to the very beginning of the game like, that is going to feel broken. That's going to feel unplayable. When you have holes, multiple holes in the map, it's going to feel like a broken, unplayable mess. And that shouldn't be happening in 2021 on one of the largest IPs in the world. At least Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl, for whatever criticisms you want to throw out, there's not holes in the map. There's not broken animations there's not things that boot you back to the very beginning of the game where you're selecting one of your three starter pokemon again like we could be critical but there's a difference between criticism and broken and these games released in a broken state on all platforms even more broken on nintendo switch we as gamers shouldn't accept such mediocrity we should be accepting such mediocrity I hope that this is a lesson not only to developers but to gamers that no matter how excited you might be for a potential release like this, we can't trust it. Wait for the reviews. A lot of people pre-bought this game or are going to buy this game. Well, now when they buy it this holiday, maybe it won't be as bad. Uh, assuming that this these patch notes actually address most everything, then maybe the game's okay to buy now. So I'm not going to tell you don't buy the game now. But we should always wait at launch to buy games until reviews are out especially from um, companies that don't have a stellar track record. Like, can you confidently buy Breath of the Wild 2? Probably, because we've never had these fundamental issues with um, Zelda games in the past. That being said, there have been bugs in Zelda games. There was the cannon room bug in Twilight Princess, where if you saved in the cannon room, you couldn't leave. You'd be stuck in the cannon room. That's a pretty damn big bug. There was actually a bug in certain versions of Majora's Mask back in the day, that if you saved at a certain owl statue, it would wipe your save data. So, like, there have been bugs like this. It's just few and far between, so people might be more trusting. Even then, wait for reviews. 
Because this stuff would not have got past reviews. This is bad. And we shouldn't be supporting bad. Now, if you want to buy it now after it's patched, I'm not going to you know fault anyone for, for getting into the games. They're really good games. And I'm sure after the patch, they're much more playable. I just, I find this to be an embarrassment. Rockstar should be ashamed. Um, and, and, and it just reminds us that we need to be a lot more careful with where we spend our money. Um, because uh, we all have a finite amount of money. We all have a finite amount of time. Uh, and I think the time part is what bothers me the most because you could argue find out amount of money, but as long as you have a job, there's always another paycheck. There's always another, uh, you know, more money coming around the corner. But when it comes to your time, you can't get that back. So if you spend your hard-earned money on the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy and you end up wasting hours of your life frustrated, you can't get that time back. And I wish that some of these video game developers realize that. If someone is choosing to spend a portion of their life, no matter how small it is, playing your games, respect that that time can't be given back. All right, folks. I'm Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.